I felt awakened. I was transformed. As if the Holy Spirit had passed through me and left my senses tingling, my reflexes alert, my mind sharp and probing. This experience was life-changing. And my heart filled with a curious mixture of deep grief and swelling love. In many ways, it restored a lot of hope that I had lost these past few years. I, I felt like I was somebody who already sort of knew a fair bit about the history of race in this country. That as I learned about all this history that I never knew, this uh, academic study turned into a more emotional event. When I really began to understand that people's lived experience in this country could be really, really different than mine. Um, and the Sacred Ground program allowed me to explore that more fully. I would guess that the ultimate goal of Sacred Ground is that we work toward redemption. Sacred Ground isn't about just wallowing in white guilt. To try to figure out what kind of biases and things I might have absorbed from my growing up. Nor is it about just sort of living into liberal tropes. Learning about redlining for me was interesting. I did not, I had heard about redlining. I did not realize that redlining was in fact a government program. It came from the federal government. It's about trying to see the world for how it is. The atrocities that we've all been responsible for uh, has been a shock to me. And the purpose of Sacred Ground was to have us explore what is the true historical record and what the depth of that suffering has been. Now, when you get into the course and you start to be confronted with the fact that uh, <laughs> maybe things aren't quite the same as you thought, and the effect of redlining is another way of transferring wealth from one group to another. Exploring segregation through the Sacred Round curriculum gave me a better context to what was happening as I was growing up. One of the things that I learned about was the, uh, the loitering laws in the South, where, you know, if you're just sort of hanging around, you could be arrested for that. And you could be put to work, you could be essentially rented out so that your labor uh, and the product of your labor is taken from you. I realized that, that my school system did not desegregate until 1965. That is 12 years after Brown versus Board of Education. As someone who works with kids, I can immediately understand how kids would be like, that's not fair. We can't be okay with God and not okay with our neighbor. And uh, Jesus had a rather expansive concept of what a neighbor is. It's everybody. I knew that despite the luxury of having been able to ignore racism for my entire life, thinking it did not really concern or affect me, the scales of my eyes had dropped. And I was now both being called to action and to instructed to listen with the ears of my heart, something that Dietrich Bonhoeffer called staying awake with Christ in Gethsemane. How can we live into our Christian identity and try to be redeemed people if we can't do that, if we're just constantly living in that lie? Well, because I recognize the ongoing inequality in the country and feel compelled to try to do something. It's, it's about understanding the policies, it's understanding the systems, uh, about educating people and being willing to actually go to bat. What would be some steps that could go towards making it right in some way? Martin Luther King famously said that the most segregated hour in America is the hour uh, on Sunday morning at worship. And we really want to change that. 
Uh, but for us here at St. Luke's, it's got to be about relationship. We need to get out in the community more. It's my hope that St. Luke's will become ever more integrated. For a long time, St. Luke's has not represented the greater community around us, and, and we can do a lot to fix that. Not just the people that look like us and that we feel comfortable with, but with everybody. And that's something that we can do. That's something that we can plan. And it's also about going out to people, uh, to churches uh, that are predominantly African-American, and listening. What it would really mean to be an ally rather than um, a rescuer. There's already people doing this good work, and we want to be allies. Uh, the extent to which we can heal those relationships is soul-soothing. In the midst of the same restlessness and perceived call to action, I feel an interesting new sense of comfort and belonging. We're all sinners, but we're not bad people. The scales of my eyes had dropped. It removes the scales from your eyes. So, so I feel as though my eyes have been opened. And I have to say that I am deeply glad that I went through the sacred ground experience. It was life changing. So I encourage you to explore the sacred ground curriculum. Think about joining a circle. I look forward to continuing the journey with circle members and others as we worked together to change the direction of society and become a beloved community.